What would make you believe in God? I asked that question of an atheist friend and he answered without hesitation. He said, if God rearranged the stars in the heavens so they spelt out the Ten Commandments, then I would believe. He was setting the bar for evidence to galactic heights. I wonder what you or your friends would consider good proof for God. Well, the Apostle Thomas also set the bar high for his own faith. When he was told that Jesus rose from the dead, he said, John chapter 20, verse 25, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Thomas wasn't there when Jesus had appeared to the other disciples the week before, and he doesn't believe the eyewitness testimony of the apostles. He wants his own proof, tangible, in your face, see it, touch it, taste it, feel it kind of proof. But he's knocked off his feet when this proof actually comes. Verse 26, a week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas had wanted to see these wounds. He demanded to see these battle scars of Jesus. And so Jesus gives him more than he bargained for. He even invites Thomas to thrust his hand into his side. It's incredible. Jesus seems proud of his scars. He displays them as badges of honor because these wounds carry a scar story that beats every other scar story told. Uh, all scar stories have a certain shape to them. Uh, things like, I was traveling along quite nicely until I encountered fill in the blank. A, a dog, a ball, a car, a fist, the force of gravity, something like that. It hurt a lot, but I'm okay now, and I have the scar to prove the story. Jesus' scar story goes something like that. His scar story says, things were fine until I encountered planet Earth. They did their worst to me, and it hurt immensely. But I'm okay now, and I have the scars to prove the story. And this is how Jesus confronts Thomas with his war wounds, the, the, these marks of suffering love. And in verse 28, Thomas cannot control himself anymore. He exclaims to Jesus, my Lord and my God. It's one of the mountaintop declarations of the Bible. And what has prompted it? Did Thomas look up and see the galaxies rearrange themselves? Did he get a heavenly message written in the stars just for him? Was he told by those, 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 those heavenly powers that he should bow and behave? Were the Ten Commandments thrust upon him? No, here is the proof of Jesus' deity, his wounds. As Thomas sees the wounds, he is confronted with the ultimate scar story. He sees that Jesus has come to our aid and stuck up for us in the only fight that really matters. And in seeing the scars, he is one. In gratitude and praise, Thomas cries out, My Lord and my God. Not simply the Lord, but my Lord. It's, it's personal for Thomas. Is it personal for you? Or are you still something of a doubting Thomas? Perhaps you're thinking, well, it's all right for Thomas. You know, he got to see Jesus. What about me? Well, that's why Jesus answers with verse 29. Then Jesus told Thomas, because you've seen me, you've believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Blessed are people when they are not like Thomas. Blessed are we when we don't see and yet believe. Well, how is that possible? Well, John's Gospel continues, verse 30, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. We can have a more blessed experience than Thomas. How? Well, we can trust the written eyewitness testimony of the apostles the New Testament, the Bible, John's Gospel. And John says that these things, these scriptures, and John's Gospel is the scripture in which this is written, these things are better than a one-off resurrection experience. And you think, well, how could that be true? How could reading a book be better than having a Thomas experience? Well, well, just imagine that Jesus appeared to you tonight at the end of your bed. Imagine you saw his wounds and you heard him say peace to you personally. 
that would give you a spiritual high for, for days, maybe even weeks. But fairly soon, you'd start to wonder whether you'd dreamed the whole thing. Perhaps, you would, perhaps people would ridicule you for your claims. And pretty soon, you would need another appearance, and then another, and then another. If you've ever asked for an extraordinary appearance of, appearance of God, you are asking for something that will impress you today, but will ultimately make you doubt more than belief. You see, it's more blessed, it's better to go on the eyewitness testimony of the Bible, because with the Bible, it's there in black and white for all time. At three in the morning, when I have doubts, when loved ones die, when I've lost my job, I can always see Jesus by opening my Bible and seeing Him in the sacred story. If that's true, how should we read our Bibles? Answer, expectantly. We should, in these pages, seek a Thomas experience. May it be that every time we come to the Scriptures, we experience it as an appearance of Christ. May we see again His war wounds, marks of a love that's gone to hell and back for us. And may we respond each time in worship to the Lord Jesus, looking at His battle scars, these marks of love, and saying ever and again, my Lord and my God.